Welcome back to Ultimate Betrayal, Sweet Revenge. We're entering into chapters 11 and 12 here. And uh, for those of you who remember uh, streaming it in the first place, we're here. This is the pinnacle. This is the iconic line coming up here that created a mascot and uh, defined a generation, really. Last episode, Brock pled forgiveness. He was apparently blackmailed into betraying Ash. And then we had another one-sided battle in which Ash's daughter, Sapphire, just creamed Max. Remember, you can email us at fanficnight at orderoftheleague.com. Send us fanfic suggestions, send us fan art, send us feedback, whatever you want. Send not, us feedback. Do not send us feedback. Do it, you coward! I'm your host, Tristan, and this is Fan Fiction Theater, a celebration of naive writing and all of its foibles, flaws, and unintentional hilarity. And what's his daughter's name, Sapphire? Is that, is that her? Yeah, daughter? that is one of his daughter's names, Sapphire. Oh, oh he has um, multiple daughters? Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, is what, like Ruby or um, Black? <laughs> uh... I don't think it was black, but... <laughs> well, there, I mean, Sapphire is named after one of the Pokemon games, right? Uh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah. Licking it. It's some mystery dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 11. After Dawn's battle, Ash which... Ash goes bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, so it ended with, Here like, next up, Dawn will win Here for sure. Here you go. Here you go. <gasps> Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> wait, am I to make strawberry lemonade with this? Okay. Well, wait. Well, you're just eating them out of your hand. I I have to use these as ingredients in this, some sort of pitcher and stir it about. When Lillian gives you lemons. <laughs> you make strawberry lemonade. <laughs> All right. What's the pink one? It's a strawberry. Wait, the red one's a strawberry. We have two varieties of strawberry? We have two types of strawberry. I'm sorry, two types of strawberry. <laughs> oh, now you're climbing in the ball pit. I can add a video component to this, folks. <laughs> oh, yeah, the green is all at the bottom. You had me sort them yesterday. Like a serial killer. Or possibly oh, no, mold. That's... It could be mold. Nope, there we go. Is, this, is that the happy ending? We got the green ball. Cool. <laughs> Mommy doing right now. I fixed it. A tiny, a tiny cube? Yeah. A tiny cube of what? Ice cube. Oh, an ice cube. You mean like ice when you eat ice chips? Yeah. Like you're in the hospital? I <laughs> don't want you to drink too much. Okay. There we are together. I probably have chocolate on my face because I was looking at her. Well, you don't have any chocolate. Okay, cool, thanks. Does she oh, know Phineas and Ferb? Uh, no, no. She knows, she knows Disney. There's stuff a new movie Disney out. Plus and she just lives there. Uh, oh, yeah, I did see. And I was like, I don't even want to get into that. Yes, I do. Oh, you do want to <laughs> learn about Phineas and Ferb? She's more of a last day of oh. Ivan Devinovich uh, fan herself. So. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, now do gymnastics. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, swing, mm -hmm. uh-huh, yeah, bend your back all weird, and then, uh-huh, don't worry, we don't share that wall with a neighbor, that would be terrifying on the other side. <laughs> this is usually a very small portion of the show. Um, oh yeah, 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 this is just, oh, and then I'll face into the, uh, all right, back to what have you. Back to the beak suit. That's what really matters. <laughs> All right, chapter 11. After Dawn's battle, which she lost handily, 3-0. to zero. No kidding. Richard announced that there would be a brief intermission so everyone could get something to eat. Let's all go to the lobby. Ash, Serena, Pikachu, Del Fox, and Greninja walked back towards Ash's house to grab their own food. As they were walking past the battlefield behind the Pokemon Center, however, the sound of raised voices caught the raven-haired man's attention. 
It's like once per chapter we have to call him the Raven Haired Man. Raven haired every times. time. <laughs> Come on, Tyler. Don't you think you've done enough training for today? Asked a voice A teenage girl by the sound of it. No way, Tyler replied. I need to make sure my Pokemon are in top shape for my battle. But if you keep training, they'll be too tired to battle later, the girl protested. At least get Nurse Joy to check up on them. Ash exchanged a glance with his friends and started to make his way towards the voices. When he rounded the corner to the back of the Pokemon Center, he saw the McKinley siblings, Evelyn and Tyler, arguing heatedly. Evelyn had her arms folded, and Tyler was glaring daggers at her. Neither of them seemed to have realized that they had company. "'What's going on here?' he asked, interrupting their little sibling spat. Evelyn and Tyler looked, turned to look at him, their eyes widening when they saw who had addressed them. "'Uh, hey there,' Evelyn stammered nervously. Tyler just folded his arms and gazed at them curiously. "'We, we, uh, were we, uh, bothering you at all?' "'No, not at all,' Serena reassured the young girl kindly. "'We just heard arguing and wanted to make sure everything was all right.' Evelyn relaxed, the fear in her eyes disappearing. "'Oh, well, we're fine,' she replied. "'I'm Evelyn McKinley all, though. I guess you would probably already know that.' "'And I'm her brother, Tyler,' Tyler added unnecessarily. He I gestured, mean, everybody knows Tyler, right?' "'Yeah.' Well, it's, 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 not necessary. "'It's not necessary to introduce him at all. <laughs> "'If it tries to do it again, just skip it.' <laughs> He gestured to the Glaceon and Pinsir standing off to one side, looking haughty but tired, and added, And these are my partners, Glaceon and Pinsir. Also unnecessary. <laughs> it's nice to meet you two, Ash said politely. My name's Ash Ketchum, and these are my partners, Pikachu and Greninja. Hi there, Pikachu said cheerfully, waving. Hello. Greninja's greeting was much cooler than Pikachu's. Much cooler. Way past cool. Hello. <laughs> much cooler than Pikachu's. Something that Evelyn and Tyler didn't miss. Evelyn looked at Greninja curiously, but didn't say anything. Tyler just nodded coldly. I'm Serena Ketchum. Serena introduced herself. And this is my partner, Delphox. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you too, the fox Pokemon said, nodding politely. So, what were you two arguing about anyway? Serena asked curiously. Yeah. Evelyn sighed. Oh, I keep telling this idiot that he needs to rest his Pokemon before his match today, but he insists on training nonstop, she answered, giving her brother an exasperated look. Ash, Pikachu, and Greninja had to hold back chuckles of amusement at the sheepish expression on Tyler's face. Well, I'm sure you both must be hungry, he said reasonably. So why don't you take a break so you can get something to eat? I'll bet your Pokemon would like to have lunch too. Tyler hesitated for a brief moment, but nodded. All right, but then it's back to training right after, he insisted. Evelyn Not rolled her eyes. <laughs> Something Ash felt like doing himself. He felt like rolling Evelyn's eyes? That seemed... <laughs> I could do that for you. <laughs> Did this kid really think that tiring his Pokemon out mere hours before a league battle would do him any favors? Next to him, Greninja and Delphox were shaking their heads in exasperation. He reminds me of his brother, Chris. The frog ninja Pokemon remarked to Ash, keeping his voice low so that only his trainer heard him. Only his trainer can hear him. Ash is the only one who's trained his aura to understand Pokemon. That's right. We've established yeah. that. Chris was the last trainer I had before Yuhi insisted on training 24-7. Sounds like fun, Ash whispered sarcastically. So they're saying that, like, Tyler is just, like dragging his Pokemon by training them constantly. But mm -hmm. Tyler's just, like, hanging around here with people talking. Does he have, like, a clearing set aside where he's forcing his Pokemon to train? 
while he's somewhere else? No, I mean, he's not training them like at this second. Just in general, right. he's pushing them too hard. But it just, it seems like he's not making them train 24 <laughs> 7 like Chris was. Well, this is part of that 24. It may have been a slight exaggeration, a hyperbole, if you will. I don't think that's Greninja's way. <laughs> Listen, I know Greninja. <laughs> Greninja nodded and grimaced, evidently at the memories of all the rigorous training sessions. The group started to walk towards the cafe everyone was having lunch at. Along the way, Evelyn and Tyler resumed their argument, much to the amusement and exasperation of the others. It was clear that the brother-sister duo were polar opposites. Seriously, you can't keep this up. Evelyn said scoldingly. I've told you a million times wow. that non-stop training won't help you in the long run. You need to care for your Pokemon properly. I might add. The bond between trainer and Pokemon <laughs> is far more important than strength. Uh, at least Evelyn seems to know what she's talking about. Pikachu remarked quietly to Greninja, who nodded. His opinion of the younger McKinley sibling was beginning to rise. Perhaps she wasn't as bad as her brother. What would you know about it? Tyler snapped. Who cares about stupid bonds? I'm a stocks guy. <laughs> I'm a future Pokemon <laughs> champion, not a friendship camp counselor. Well, from what I've seen, you're neither. Tyler <laughs> smirked at his sister. Evelyn, dear sister of mine, someday when you're older and more mature, you'll finally realize that I'm right. On the road to success, there are no... He broke off as he crashed into the door to the cafe and <laughs> fell to the ground. <laughs> uh, is he gone? Is he dead? <laughs> Ash and Serena immediately ran over to make sure he was all right. To their relief... He was perfectly fine except for a, bl a bloody nose. Evelyn, meanwhile, looked from her fallen Perfect. brother to Ash and back to her brother. And now, since this is, like, based on an anime, that means he's turned on? <laughs> the bloody nose, yeah. Yeah, is that, is that how this works? Okay. She looked back to her brother. So, I guess this is the end of the road, she commented quietly. <laughs> It does make End it sound like chapter. he's dying. <laughs> I'm I'm still in awe that up there the author put she said scoldingly. Uh Evelyn said scoldingly. It's like that is such a long way to walk rather than just saying Evelyn scolded. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And There's a lot of adverbs just... I didn't know about. I keep learning these <laughs> things. A ton of them. <laughs> She's like, I didn't know that was an adverb, but okay. In fan fiction, everything's an adverb, if you only believe. <laughs> Just L-Y, that's all you need. Jam it on there and let's roll. So, Ash Ravenly looked at the group around him. <laughs> Raven <-herodly. laughs> Chapter 12. After everyone had eaten their fill, the first round of... Silver, Silverhood League resumed. The next battle was a matchup between a trainer named Avery and her sister, Leela. Instead of going back to watch it, however, Ash went to speak with Greninja and Pikachu in private. Thank God. Ash, what's going on? What did you need to talk to us about? Greninja asked. We need to come up with more revenge schemes. Ash answered. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to joke, we need to find new ways to kill people, and <laughs> well, it really got there you. before me, yeah. I got dinged yeah. there. Keeping his voice low in case anyone was listening in. Where are they? I thought they were in private. Doesn't he, like, own a palace or something? I picture them under the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because as much fun as it is watching the traitors get getting their asses handed to them, it would make our revenge more worthwhile if we could drag it out for a bit. I agree, Pikachu said at once. Count Ash me. got his first taste of blood from Ta Tyler Taylor falling over, and now he's like, <laughs> we need more blood. <laughs> That's what my life has been missing. 
count me in. What do you think we should do? Greninja asked eagerly. Ash thought for a moment. He wanted to embarrass his ex-friends in a way that would be sure to ruin them for a long time, and somehow he didn't think his usual method of humiliation that, is to say defeating them in battle would, cut it this time. The novelty would wear off by then. It has already, let me tell you. Since they were already (laughs) being destroyed in their Silverhood League first round battles. He would have to think outside the box for this one if he wanted to get 18 more chapters in or whatever. <laughs> it's like this kid is is writing this in search of, like, vengeful catharsis that's never going to come. <laughs> he set out to write The Count of Monte Cristo for Pokemon, <laughs> and it's not quite yeah, coming together. Yeah. Okay, he would have to think outside the box for this one. It would be cool if we could do an interview. The frog ninja Pokemon began slowly and used it to expose them as the moronic backstabbing assholes they are. Ash grinned as an idea (laughs) formed in his head. Greninja, you're brilliant. I've got it now, he said excitedly. All right. Before I tell you my plan, though, I'll need you to get Serena, Delphox, Jade, and Sapphire. They need to be here for this, too. Greninja nodded and disappeared off to retrieve the others. Ash leaned back and folded his arms, whistling to himself. Pikachu (laughs) looked at him curiously, but didn't say anything. He knew from experience that Ash wouldn't tell him what his plan was until everyone was present. A few minutes later, Greninja finally returned with Serena, Delphox, and the two Ketchum twins in tow. They exchanged curious glances as Ash led them inside the cafe everyone had been eating at earlier. Okay, so were they just like in a bush outside the cafe? All right, what's this about, Dad? Jade asked curiously. Do we need to help you get revenge on the traitors? Sapphire asked hopefully. Ash chuckled. (laughs) Yes, you do, he replied. Awesome, Sapphire cheered. When can we start? I need to know the nature in which he replied. (laughs) (laughs) It's left up to interpretation. First, I should tell you my plan, Ash said. Here it is. Sapphire, you're going to be taking as many embarrassing pictures of the traitors as you can. Greninja can help you with that. He's good at sneaking around. Get a bunch of upskirts if you can. <laughs> you <laughs> serious? No, that's no. that's not in there. What? Oh. It's okay. just it's implied. Oh it's between the okay. lines. Well, it's super petty already, so. <laughs> uh. Jade, you're going to be in charge of writing an embarrassing story about the traitors. So <laughs> we're gonna find out that Jade has actually written this story that we're reading. Mm. It's gonna be the twist at the end. You guys ever see Mommy Dearest? No. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> just shut all this down and go right now, because it is the best bad movie you'll ever see. But at the okay. end, Mommy Dearest died. She was awful. She beat him for having wire hangers, which I don't know why the kid brought wire hangers into the house, because she wants none ever. But at, at the end of the movie, the kids get shafted in the will, and then the brother is just like, well, I guess mom had the last laugh, huh? And then the daughter's like, did she? What Daniel or whatever his name was, did she? And she looks at the camera and then the credits roll. And I realize, oh, the daughter wrote the piece of shit book this is based on. <laughs> so mom doesn't get the last laugh. So that's why I connected that to this. Sorry, okay. what, what time is it? <laughs> 617. All right. Oh, yeah, we're, we're getting close, guys. <laughs> Um, Brownie's okay. happening. I'm gonna have so, some deep thoughts. So, is this their way of sneaking in Pokemon Snap? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, yeah, that's exactly it. All right, okay. Um, embarrassing story about the traders to go along with the pictures. They're just he's just making a zine, a hate zine. Right, right, right. We'll be publishing both in the newspaper. Of course he controls the media. My God. (laughs) Serena. Rupert Murdoch. (laughs) 
Now, wait, wait a minute, though. Wait, wait a minute. I, okay, okay. Didn't they really betray him? Like, why do they need to make up stories about them? <laughs> they really just told him to give up, and probably the the public at large would not find that as reprehensible as Ash himself has. All right. So maybe okay. he does need okay. a little more dirt on them. Because it seems like up to this point, you could you could see this as proving them all wrong, right? But now he's going into full on villain mode. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, he's right. turned a corner oh, this here. This seems like evidence in a crime. This whole thing <laughs> seems like evidence. Like we we gotta submit this to at least a he's, therapist. He's going full <laughs> Walter break down White what's here. What's going on? Yeah, yeah okay. it's it's all a right. little wild. Serena. You can help me create a video that will humiliate them even more. And Delphox, you'll be helping me and Serena. What about me? Pikachu asked. You can help whoever you want, Ash told him. Or you could try to convince more of their Pokemon to join us. All right, I'll see what I can do, the little electric mouse agreed. Great, Ash said. So... Does everyone understand what their job is? Got it, Dad, Jade said, grinning. Me too. This is going to be awesome, Sapphire said excitedly. Should we get started now? Greninja asked. Ash thought for a moment. Sure, why not? He agreed. Go ahead and get those pictures taken. Jade, you can start writing if you want as well. Sapphire and Greninja nodded and sped off. Jade followed her sister a bit more slowly. Ash turned back to Serena, Delphox, and Pikachu. So, what should the video be about? Serena asked. I was thinking maybe we could have one video for each traitor. Good idea, Ash complimented her. I have the perfect idea for May, so let's start with her. Then we can figure out what to do about the rest of them. What do you suppose we do with May's video? Delphox asked. Uh, we could make her look like a whore, Pikachu suggested. Wait, or, what did you just say? <laughs> Pikachu suggested we could make her look like a whore. Okay. Or, <laughs> All right, just make sure I understood that. So, yeah. Whore. A whore. What a goose. <laughs> or we could see if we could find footage of her screwing up in her contests, or we could... He was cut off as a loud scream rose up inside the stadium, followed by the sound of raucous laughter. The four of them exchanged confused glances and ran back towards the arena to see what was going on. When they arrived, Ash saw the cause of the chaos at once. Someone had managed to get a picture of May on the large screen that read, Whore of Hoenn, we'll show you a good time for five bucks. Ash, Serena, Pikachu, and Delphox couldn't contain their laughter. They doubled over, clutching their sides and gasping for breath. In the stands, they could see May crying, which only served to make them laugh harder. I wonder who did that, Ash chuckled once he was able to breathe properly again. Well, it can't have been any of our friends, Serena said, frowning. They're busy with their own jobs, so it must have been one of the other competitors. Well, I'm making whoever did that a part of the royal court, Ash said, entirely serious. I just have to find him or her. How are you going to find out who did it? Pikachu asked. I'll think of a way, Ash replied. And anyway, weren't you going to talk to the traitor's Pokemon? I think some of them should be in the Pokemon Center by now. Oh, right. I'll be back later, Ash. Pikachu said as he scampered off. Ash watched him go before turning to the crowd again, just in time to see a male spectator hand May what looked to be a small sum of money. She took the money, pocketed it, and screamed at the top of her lungs. <laughs> Which seems to imply that it's true. <laughs> you know, it's like, damn my heritage! Like She actually just posted that ad. Author's note, so who do you think posted the picture? Comment your guess in the reviews. Okay, I think that's um, that's probably enough. Yeah. 
enough of that one for tonight. There's Pikachu. There <laughs> right. It's Pikachu in the later seasons. Delivering his classic line. <laughs> when I think of Pikachu taglines, it's like, number one is chill. And then number two is we can make it look like a hole. <laughs>